my downstreamer won't suck bleach. What do I need to do? And today, I'm going to talk about why your downstreamer, some things that you may need to check to see why won't it suck bleach. And so there is four or five things that can cause this not to suck bleach. And this past weekend, I actually had a training class and I had three of the things of why it wouldn't suck bleach. And so in this training class I had, it was one that I had all kinds of issues of anything that could be caused in my in-person training that we I had to troubleshoot and fix it. So it was really good for the students there. But very first thing of why your downstreamer won't suck is the number one reason that I see people of why this thing won't suck. And basically when the hose is on there, I tell people to take it off and pull the trigger with no, with no tips on it, or sometimes even without a gun and will it suck my finger, right? That's how I know that if this is working because we got to troubleshoot whether it's here or somewhere else. So I always like to see it. And if you don't know, let's talk about a little bit about how a downstreamer works, right? How does this thing pull chemical through a hose that can be 10, 20 feet away? How does it work? And so if we look into the downstream injector, you can see that it's just got a little bitty hole in the downstream injector here. And so how this works is as water's flowing through this, as water's flowing through this, what it does is it causes atmospheric pressure to lower. So as the atmospheric pressure lowers in here, what is atmospheric pressure? Atmospheric pressure is as we're sitting here, it's 14.7, right? That's 14.7. For some of you scuba divers, as you go down every 33 feet, we add another 14.7 and you go down 66 feet, 14.7 more, right? And this is the exact same thing. And so what it does is as it's flowing through there, it causes the atmospheric pressure to drop, which then causes the atmospheric to push it in there, basically how this works. And so it will feel like a sucking as it's sucking. That's how these work. So the number one reason why I see that these don't work, and it's a really simple one, is, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it on here. On here, you can see that there is an arrow down here at the bottom that's set pointing this way, right? So if you turn this backwards, it will not suck. So that's the first thing to make sure that you have the arrow pointing the right way so that way it's sucking the right way. Number two is, is the number two problem is you have the wrong size tips. You buy a J-Rod and they have the wrong size tips. And so with these tips, you got to make sure that you have the right size tips. And so how do we know which is the right size clips, tips? So the first two numbers over here, the zero, zero, the zero, zero here, is this pattern spray. So that doesn't really mean one way or the other, right? So a zero, zero means it's a straight shooter. The four zero is the size of the hole. And the size of the hole is the important part because if we get too much pressure on this thing, it will shut off. And so by having the wrong size, too small of a hole or an orifice, it will cause it not to pull. So that is number 40 is for a four gallon a minute. A number eight gallon a minute is a 0560, right? So the 60 series is an eight gallon. The 40 series is the four gallon. And that's where we are for our for this here. So the next thing and where I was talking about getting too much pressure is this is something that what happens is if we get too much pressure and this can be a cause of your problem is it comes down to friction loss. So if I have my fireman in here, you understand friction loss. And so I will talk a little bit about friction loss, right? So friction loss is um, as the size of the hole or orifice, it causes more. So this is why we can only put about 250, 300 feet of hose because we have friction loss so if we're flowing four gallons a minute right here oh i gotta go back 
if we're flowing four gallons a minute right here and we're on a three eighths hose, every hundred feet is going to add 90 PSI. If we jumped up to half inch pressure wash hose, it would only be 24. So the bigger the orifice, the more. So if I have four or 500 feet on here, my downstream injector is not going to pull because this is only going to pull to a certain PSI. And once it gets over that PSI, then it's not going to work anymore. So that's why you can change out the tips and go with the high pressure tips, which I honestly don't like to do. I like to use an 05 so that way I don't have a chance of penciling it and stuff like that. Or you can use the M5 twist. But this is something that can cause this here. So the next problem can be your hose is kink somewhere. Sometimes if you get it into a bucket and it sits there over time, the sun bakes on it and then eventually it will kink down. And then when it goes to suck, it will suck that thing shut and that can be a problem. Another issue can be that the gun doesn't open up all the way. So when you're pressure, your pressure washing gun, you might think it's okay. So that's why a lot of times I'll tell people to pull your pressure wash gun off and run it with no gun on it to see if it sucks. So that way you can say, okay, my gun is bad. Maybe you got the wrong size gun. Maybe you don't have enough flow. Maybe there's something caught in it. So your pressure washing gun can be an issue too. So that's why we are going to do it that way. Sometimes these do go bad. And what happens is in here, there's a little ball and a spring in here. And so this weekend, that's what happened to me. And so what I'll do is I'll actually be pulling the pressure wash gun with no tip or with the right tip because then it's supposed to be sucking. And then I'll take a screwdriver and I'll just push that little ball down in there. You can see the ball in there as I push it down, pull it pops it back up. And what happens is that ball in here will get up to the top of the seat and that can be your issue. So that's how these downstream injectors work. They work really well. I know there's some people out there saying you can't soft wash with the downstream injector. And I did it for years. I did hundreds and hundreds of houses doing it. I've taught hundreds of people how to do it with the downstream injector that uses the downstream injector. So you can, because all soft washing is putting chemical on the wall. And this is a way that we can put chemical on the wall. Now, can we get real strong? No, but we don't need real strong to do house washing most of the time. So I hope this answers your question. I actually had a question on my comment. Somebody had commented on one of my questions here or on one of my videos asking about what could be problem. So just to recap, one, make sure you have the right tip in your J-Rod or an M5 twist. Two, make sure that it's going the right way. Three, make sure your hose isn't kinked. Four, make sure that your gun is good. And so those are some just quick tips of what to do to check to see if your downstreamer is working properly. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comment. I'm always interested in your questions. And if you made it this far, comment anyway. I appreciate it. It helps me out. And I hope that I can help you grow to your $100,000 or your million dollar goal. Have an awesome day and we'll see you all later.